and which we are still going to share even today. And then completion of learner set reschedule continues. No handwritten learner set risk will be accepted, colleagues. A composite list of learner set risk per grade must be completed. All learners must be numbered in sequence. The original school stamp and the principal's initials must be attached only on the top right hand corner of every page. So if it's five pages, the principal will initial all those five pages at that specific space colleagues there is our schedule it starts with a uh, learners at risk which were progressed in the previous year and then goes to those who were retained those are two different categories and then we come to the current year that is 2022 we have term one and term two. For leaks, it is important to emphasize that we don't repeat the capturing or the population of these learners. Let us say, for an example, Kazi was progressed in grade four, and now Kazi is in grade five. Kazi appears under progressed learners at the top and still Kazi here in term one did not do well or in term two Kazi has already been captured colleagues we don't repeat here we'll only have those learners who did not meet the minimum requirements in term one or in term two who are not progressed from the previous grade and who are not retained from the previous year. So that is what we mean when we say we don't repeat. The only thing is that to ensure that we support all these learners, that is why we've got different categories. If Kazi is a progressed learner, Kazi support has started. Even if he she does not do well in term one, the support is continuous. Support for Kazi will always be there. Not unless a, she was progressed, but in the current year she's doing well. Not identified as an NP, not identified as a borderline case. That is a different story. And then we come to the newly admitted learners. We populate colleagues for term one and term two. That is if they don't appear from the borderline cases, from the retained learners, from the progressed learners. Because even if they are newly admitted, they are captured uh, with their status on SSMs. So it will say if they were progressed. It will say if they are repeaters. So that is very important, colleagues. And then we'll populate our uh, remote learning learners. Uh, going down, colleagues, learners that did not meet the minimum requirements for term three. That will await the end of the term when we submit schedules and the beginning of term four. So this time around, we are going to end there with the learners that uh, have been officially approved to uh, learn from home. I hope colleagues that is clear. If not, we'll take that as and when questions are posed. That is the Annex Chat D colleagues that you are going to fill your part and then would fill what needs to be filled by the district uh, assessment team.
and then Annex Chat E is our instrument for monitoring. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. It is us when we are with you who would request the following as they appear on our tool. That is the continuation of our Annex Chat E. And then Annex Chat F is our monitoring instrument again for term four. And then colleagues, we have our announcements. Uh, we're going to conduct this process on the 5th, the 6th and the 7th of September. We request colleagues to please uh, wait their turn. On the 5th, we are expecting just circuit 1 and 2 at Eldocrest. It is because this is a mammoth task to do. So can the circuit 3 and 4 wait for the 6th of September? We shall be at Ndondo. And then circuit 5 and 6, wait for the 7th of September at Ndondo as well. But let us not forget, colleagues, to come with evidence of support to for all those learners that we shall have identified. Colleagues, this is just a request that if come the 1st of September, you are done with your schedules, you can upload them on our links. We're going to share the management plan with you, but you know the official that is assigned to your schools in terms of the ratification of schedules. It's still the same officials we have not changed anything. Um, and just a reminder to those sampled schools in terms of the provincial post moderation that the files be submitted from the week of the 19th to the 22nd, because the 23rd, the process is starting at a precedent high. And then our set meeting will be on the 26th of September. Those are our links, colleagues. Still our links. Uh, colleagues, we know that um, uh, Mr. Moore, who was seconded for the English Africans, as, as a subject advisor, has gone back to school. We have in our midst Madam Angelique Murray. So the schools that were assigned to Mr. Moore will now uh, upload under Madam Murray's link, and that is the link, colleagues. Uh, I know, colleagues, that. Um, to detach, it's not an easy thing. Can the following schools upload on Mr. Maluleke's link? Uh, we have allocated you to Mr. Maluleke because we have now gained a colleagues that beefed up our unit, so we are now many. Please don't upload on the previous colleagues who used to assist you because now when these new colleagues are looking for you, they are not aware that you have uploaded uh, to the previous officials link and they take it that you have not submitted. So these are Mr. Maluleges and those are Madam Mabasa schools. Even in the management plan, they appear like this. I just felt that I needed to flag them so that colleagues are reminded because you might take the manage management plan for granted because you know who do you submit to. Please take this into cognizance. And then the three schools are still submitting by Madam Langenis. 
and then colleagues uh, that is the end of our presentation but i just want to uh, flag something if colleagues may allow me i'm back colleagues colleagues we have developed this a uh, graphical a demonstration, the screenshots that will guide us on how to complete a, this learner set risk schedule. A, at the bottom, we have our schedule, colleagues, and then at the top, we have our progressed learners from the previous year. So we taking this information all of it you'll see the cells are the same and the numbering is the same the headings are the same so we just copy up until the code and paste it onto this schedule because here the the comment is going to come from us as and when we interact with yourselves and never mind the bachelors because this is done up until FET. So you copy up until the code, you paste here. You leave this part for us. Okay. We copy it as is all the marks. Those progressed learners, we want to see all the marks. Then uh, retained all the marks. Those who did not uh, meet uh, minimum requirements in term one, all the marks in a nutshell, colleagues. We, we don't only populate the marks that are affected, all the marks. So yeah, that's the first one. Let me go up. The second one will be our learners that were retained last year. Can you see the arrow goes right through, right through to where it's supposed to be populated? And those are the learners that did not make it the previous year. We take this, we copy this data. If colleagues, they are more than what is provided by the schedule, you increase the cells of your schedule by inserting up until that number that is needed. And that is the data for term one, which we will bring to term one, insert cells for term one, and then we'll have the data for term two, we insert cells for term two, and then we'll have the data for the borderline cases, uh, the newly admitted up until the officially approved. Uh, the rest of the schedule will be completed in term three and term four. That is just a demonstration which will accompany this presentation. And over and above that, we have a a tutorial, a video that will be taking us through. But uh, let us indicate that we are glad that most of the schools have started with this process and they've been calling uh, where they did not understand to uh, seek uh, clarity. Uh, so colleagues are not, did not just wait for this meeting. Thank you very much for that. Okay, colleagues. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming to your question, madam. Let me uh, check if with our presentation we are done. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are done with the presentation. So we can unshare and then begin to interact. Uh, let me then unmute the colleagues so that we are able to talk.
but can colleagues not on talk? Can only the colleagues whose hands are up be the ones who are unmuting their mics and pose their questions? Okay, I'm just saving the changes. Okay, there. I can see one hand. Let me see who is it before I go to the chat box. Okay. I don't want to butcher this name. Can the Colleague with the hand up because I only see one hand. Unmute and ask a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, ma'am. Oh, it's ma'am from Litigate. Um, I was asking with regard to the statement that you made that if Elena is appearing in one uh, hearing category of uh, Elena's at risk, Elena's. Yeah. To be repeated in the other category. So when it comes to learners who uh, who failed or, or with NP in term one and term two, because you said we must insert firstly term one, then mm -hmm. term two. So if the learner is NP in term one and also in term two, are we going to repeat the same learner again? Are you done, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that question. You can lower your hand. Lower your hand and mute, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, you are not going to repeat that learner. The learner is an NP in term one, and the learner is an NP in term two. You'll only put that learner under term one. The only difference will be that the learner's support continues into term two into term three because the learner has been identified throughout the support will be continuous however the learner will only be captured once is that clear ma'am ma thank you so much thank you very much uh, let me have matsepo Matsepo, unmute. Matse okay. Hi, ma'am, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hi, ma'am. Ma'am, I would like to ask, where do we get the annexures from? Like for everything with regard to the learners at risk. Yeah, can you make I've shared that with you, ma'am. I'm going, I'm going to share again today. All right, please, may you kindly share it to us, ma'am. This is actually the first time that I'm hearing about these annexures. Don't tell me. Uh, yes, ma'am, we just only, this is the first time we actually in this meeting attending this. So it's the first time. You, from which school are you, ma'am, if I may ask? Uh, from Espo Academy. I don't know if we received it or not. Okay. Uh, please drop me your email address on my WhatsApp because I'm not sure if I have you on my database. Eh? All right, ma'am, I don't think you do. Um, could you please give me your WhatsApp number, ma'am, so I can drop you an, an, a message? Okay, let me put my number on the chat box now. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. You, you are welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, you can lower your hand. Colleagues, do we have any other clarity-seeking question while I, I go through the chats? Let me go through these questions. Kindly resend the register. Hi, ma'am. Kindly resend the register. May you kindly resend? Oh, it's about the register. Please, please indicate to me if you have received the register. Register, please. The current year, term one and term two for NP, if Elena appear on term one, should we use both term one and term two? We have answered that one. Which marks must be put for the PG learners? All the marks for all the subjects. 
struggling with the network. I'm asking for register. It's back. Mem Kazi, can we please get the presentation so that we can refer? Always, colleagues, when we hang up here, the presentation is all yours. May you please email the presentation? Uh, with regards to borderline cases, do we first work the overall average mark and then populate their term one and term two after working our list? Uh, let's see, clarity of evidence for support. Is it for all the learners at risk or only learners who have achieved in term one? Clarity for learners at risk. Evidence is for all the categories. For as long as those learners are at risk, we need evidence for the subjects that are at risk. Uh, let me go to uh, this question. Nirasha is asking, with regards to borderline cases, do we first work the overall average mark and then populate their term one and term two? No, no, Ms. Pile, we are not working out the average. It is per subject. If in HL the learner is a borderline case, we're going to put that learner for HL. If it's Oh, there's the hand. Do, do, do you want to verbalize it, Miss Pile? How are you, Kasi? I'm good, and you, ma'am? I'm well, thank you. I understand that we've got to work out or we've got to look at the borderline cases for our subjects. Yes. Now, if I look at my learners, for example, in term one, maybe the grade four home language, English, there's probably about let's say 25 learners that have between 50 to 54 percent but in mm. term two um there's probably 15 learners but if i work out an average of 50 to 54 percent for term one and term two i may end up with only five learners so if i work out, if you look at term one they may have say 54 percent and in term two 75 percent my list is going to be quite long for, for example, English, Afrikaans and maths, because they may be borderline only in one term and improve in the next term. It's going to be quite a long list. OK, Madam Pile, are you done? Yes. OK, let me respond to that. You can lower your hand, ma'am. Um, Madam Pillay, remember that the borderline cases are not the learners that uh, have not met the min minimum requirements. So in essence, they have passed that subject. So there they won't be support for them because they have passed. We only want to cover ourselves so that when we carry on, they drop. We just identifying them in this instance. Remember that they won't appear under term two because they have improved. They'll only appear under term one, but they are above the minimum requirement. We just uh, protecting ourselves so that if they drop in term three and they drop in term four. They should have been identified. I don't know if I'm answering you. The list, yes, will be long, but there won't be support for those learners. Because as a school, before this process, you did not know that there were learners at risk. Do you want to make a follow up, ma'am? Uh, yes, Kazi, no, I fully agree. We certainly didn't support those learners because it's not policy um, to support learners between 50% and above because they met the past requirements. What my concern is we have quite a large number of learners, a large amount of learners 
that fall in that category, uh, which we would put on the list. But if I work at an average mark, it will be fewer learners. If I have to ha have um, added on all of them that didn't meet past requirements in term one or term two, for those that not sorry, not didn't meet that have met the past requirements and are borderline, it's quite yeah. a long list of learners. So uh, to me, it would make more sense if I work out an average and then only add those learners on. Okay, Madam Pillay, let me come in again and indicate that, like we've indicated that this is a pilot. Please formalize those concerns, drop us an email with those suggestions so that this process is improved on. But at this point in time, please populate those learners no matter how long that list will be. Okay, Madam Pillay? Thank you, Will do so I'm just confirming. You are saying that we don't have to have support and communication with those parents because they were not part of the learners at risk list. Come again, Madam Pillay. I'm just confirming because they are borderline cases and were not identified at learners at risk in term one and term two because they met the past requirements. We don't necessarily have to have support for them and communication with parents. Yes, ma'am, you are right. We'll have Thank you. We'll have the communication once they are term three performance is now affected because remember, we're still going to ratify these learners at risk and uh, support them going forward. So if they drop and their performance affect what is at the top there, it is then that we'll communicate with the parents. No, perfect. And I would just want to confirm who do I send the queries to about our borderline cases uh, with what we're picking up because I know it's a pilot uh, system. Oh, you, you send it to assessment officials and then you CC our boss, Mr. Kezani Sikuni. You'll send to Kazi and Mlangeni, goodness, and then you'll CC Mr. Sikuni. And then we are Thanks. going to, well, to, to take this feedback to the province. Thank you, will do. Okay then, thank you, madam. Do we have any other question? You can lower your hand, Ms. Pillay. Thank you for that contribution. See if we still have another clarity seeking question. Nongu, Greyville. Hi, Mam Kazi. Hi, Nongu. How are you? I'm okay, and you, Sissi? I'm well, thanks for asking. Mam Kazi, please, just for clarity purposes, ne? Yes. For document, um, evidence of documents, please verify. would provide, I understand now, borderline, we can't have any evidence of support, right? So yes. our evidence of support would be for the retained learners, for the progress learners, for the learners at risk. Am I correct? For the this? NPs, yes. Yes, yes. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Thank you so much, Mamkazi. Thank you, Nungu.